Another one of my ecospheres is one year old. This time it is the planted ecosphere, which is even more unknown than the natural ecosphere. As you can see, I made it just a little over a year ago. The last update I did on this ecosphere was over 8 months ago, so I think it's time to do another one. I'm also using some footage in this video that you've never seen before, from an update I never wound up making. A lot has happened with this ecosphere. As you can see there's a lot of ostracots now, but more on that later. To make this ecosphere I actually had to break through the ice. This is actually the second ecosphere I made. I guess you could say I have learned some things in a year. For instance, I don't do this stupid stuff anymore. The plants I added are Vallisneria. I initially made these two ecospheres to compare them to one another, but more on that later. As you can see, there were now two healthy Vallisneria plants in the closed ecosystem, as well as a variety of animals. After two months, the first new sprout had appeared. It was looking really healthy and it had already grown quite large. The other Vallisneria have reached the water surface by now. A new species appeared as well, Carchesium polypinum. This one also appeared after some time in the natural ecosphere which is quite interesting to see. So after two months we had a tiny little ostracot population going on, which looked very stable and steady. So now we're four months in. The sprout from a few months back has almost reached the top. From that sprout a new plant has sprouted that has grown quite tall as well. And from that sprout a new sprout is starting to form. I think that the white specks are the places where the string algae is attached to the plant. However, I have only seen this on Vallisneria. After 4 months, the population of clam shrimp has started to grow as well. Vallisneria in the ecosphere were looking really, really healthy. This was the last time we saw the Daphnia. They lasted for four months before they disappeared. In the natural ecosphere, they disappeared after a little over a month. I think it's time I show you guys some slow-mo again. So now it's been 7 months. This is the footage you've never seen before. And well, something started to happen with the Vallisneria. 
The original Velocinaria that I planted in the ecosphere had both died. And the new sprouts weren't getting big at all. I honestly have no idea what caused this, but I do know that it had an effect on the ecosystem. The animal life had almost completely disappeared. Let me show you something. This is what a healthy Velocinaria leaf looks like. You can see all the parallel grains and structures and it has a nice green color. This? Well, this is a whole different story. All color has disappeared and you can't see any grains or structures anymore. The leaf is dead. This is a plant that is starting to die. You can still see grains and structures in the leaf, but it's getting less clear. The color is also slowly starting to fade away. It's only a matter of time before this entire plant dies. A different leaf from this plant is already dead. A new species appeared. It seems to be some sort of mite. However, I haven't been able to identify it. I always find it fascinating how new species can appear after months. Also, a new structure of algae is starting to form on the glass. So now we are back in the present again. One year after I made this closed ecosystem. The population of different species of ostracod are growing a lot. In the one year update on the natural ecosphere we thought about the possibility of the rise and fall of different species being seasonal. That theory wouldn't make sense in this situation. It is very weird that the number of ostracods is higher than it has ever been whilst the middle of December. There's always so much going on in the ecospheres that I just simply cannot explain. That's also part of the magic of it. Here you can clearly see that these ostracods are in fact different species. The one on the bottom left is a youngling of what I like to call clam shrimp. The other ones are adults of a different kind of ostracod. This Phalasneria plant and this Phalasneria plant are the two original ones. There's not much left of them. But the younger and newer plants are all looking really healthy. They're just not growing that big. They have grown all around the jar. This is something I've never seen before. I'm 99% sure that this is an ostracod molting. I can't think of anything else this might be. It appears to be a bit camera shy. I would be too if I was getting changed. It was crazy how well I was able to see these clam shrimp under this lighting. As I said in the beginning of this video, I made this ecosphere to compare it against the natural ecosphere I had made a week earlier. I wanted to do a planted versus not planted ecosphere. However, the comparison is totally unfair as there were completely different animals in here from the start. But it has been very interesting to see this closed ecosystem develop and to see the ecosystem thriving for so long. I always explain to people how a closed ecosystem is never stable from the start. A lot of events will occur and it will develop for a long time before reaching a possible stable state. I'm sure this ecosphere is still developing and I'm looking forward to seeing how it does. That is pretty much everything I have to say about this ecosphere for now. This will probably be the last video I make this year. I really enjoyed working on Life in Jars this year 
and I think it's been a good year. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all in 2019. Happy New Year and thank you for watching.